Mary Lambie, welcome to my podcast. Oh, well, kia ora to you and thank you for having me in your fine, beautiful studio. Three camera shoot, two microphones, one pair of headphones. I'm oh, impressed. And, 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 uh... Personalised cameras. <laughs> Ben, you must be special. This is your own genuine chat show, isn't it? Yeah, well, no one gave me my own, but yeah. now there's platforms where you can do it yourself if you want to. So. Just to, you're not actually beholden to some network, as I was back in the day, um, saying, right, you'll sit here, you'll do this, you'll wear that, you'll say this. Yeah. And even though I tested a lot of that, and eventually over seven years it became my own gig, but in the early days they were very, very controlling about who, what, why, how. And to the fact that you can set this whole thing up, and over how long have you been doing this? Uh, like eighteen months. Now. Yeah, eighteen months, and um, and and you've just made it your own. It's awesome. It's yeah. Well done, you. Oh, thank you so much. There's so much to talk about with you. The most recent thing you've um, popped up again publicly for is Celebrity Treasure Island. I'm not crying, by the way. You, you what, is it hay fever? What no, are you? it's not. Oh, sorry. No, I because I appreciate we've got a visual element to this. No, I had eye surgery <laughs> about a month ago, which was actually a game changer. I didn't have particularly stuffed eyes. I just couldn't read my cell phone, you know, the small print. And it just annoyed me having all these plus one glasses everywhere. And my <laughs> long vision was awesome. Are you in that phase now? Yes, I, oh my God. Such a pain in the ass, man. And so I had this fantastic <laughs> surgery where they take your lens out, they put new lenses in. It's been awesome. But I'm just finding, I'm just settling down with it. So I have to eye drop and mm. carry on. And if it's quite a bright day and lights sort oh, of yeah. um, aggravate them a bit. But no, I'm very emotionally feel stable, but I may not look it. Yeah. But I'm really wrapped with the surgery. Because <laughs> you're, you're, uh, you're, you're, you're 10 years older than me. Um, but my my eyesight in the last year, alarmingly quick, it's gone downhill. Yeah. My favourite restaurant is a, an Italian place called Prego. I can't read the menus there anymore. I know, I know. <laughs> um, I, and that, you wait till you live with that for about five years and then you'll just say, enough. And it was only through a friend of mine who's exactly the same age as me who went off and had it done. I went, you what? You had your lenses. Someone went into your eye and took out your natural lens and put another one in. She said, yeah. Happens all the time. Everyone's doing it. Mm. So if you see an older person with no glasses, you know they've probably had the surgery. <laughs> what a great way to start it. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the glasses thing, I, 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 so I was embarrassed about, I don't know why, maybe that stigma of glasses or a feeling of old age or something, but I was in the, the supermarket aisle with the magazines and the stationery and the glasses and there was no one else in the aisle. So I thought, I'm going to try some on. Um, so I tried on the plus ones and it was like a, ha! Oh, a moment. moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I so see. the font on my phone looked huge all yeah. of a sudden. But now supermarket shopping is such a different experience for me because you know how sometimes on the little, little type on the price tickets and they'll say it's X amount per kilo, you know, and yeah. I often look at that as opposed to the bigger price. Well, that was in font so tiny that I just couldn't be bothered putting, getting in my glasses and putting them on and no, 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 no. And, but now... Shopping has become quite a different experience because I can actually see what I'm paying for stuff. It's awesome. No, I'm, I'm really thrilled with it. And I can't wait till they fully settle down. It'd be great. Oh, how good. Okay, so, um, yeah, I want to talk about Celebrity Treasure Island. Oh, yeah. Uh, then we can talk about um, the, the early years of Mary Lambie, uh, maybe the Good Morning stuff, and then the um, the transition into being a, a business owner with Subway. Well, I don't do that anymore. Yeah, no, but no, but you did. It's a it's a chapter in your life. Oh, and you yeah, were very it's a chapter in my life. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I thought you thought I still had the oh. stores. <laughs> I thought, no. man, you haven't done your research, man. It was <laughs> seven years ago. Well, there. Don't worry okay. about that. So, first of all, celebrity celebrity Treasure Island. Um, I'm guessing there's one of three reasons you went on. It's either um, for the money, the profile, or the experience. Yeah, the third. Experience. The experience? I love an adventure. Ah. I actually love an adventure. And I was invited to sort of be part of it because they're clearly short of women of a certain age because, you know, they like to sort of cover the whole gamut of age. And they did ask me a couple of years ago, and it just didn't work out with the children. I, I mean, my kids now have all left school, so they're fully independent and it's wonderful. But then, no, there was just too much juggle involved with the three of them. They're mm. all quite close in age, my kids. And so I thought, no, no, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. But this time it worked. And I, I love the outdoors and I love an adventure and I thought, I will not win this. So I never went in thinking, man, I'm going to take this out. No, I just wanted to experience it. Mm. But also to, to win it, you've got to be there a long time, eh? Like a, a month, 30 days or something. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it's they knocked it out in this. So probably about three weeks or thereabouts, right. I think. I don't know because I clearly didn't make it to the end. <laughs> yeah, in fact, yeah. I've barely seen an episode, so yeah. I hope it's cutting well. It's yeah. edited well. At the time of um, recording this, I've been sent... An advance episode of the episode where you get kicked oh, out, my eliminated. Oh. Um, you you haven't seen that? No, 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 I haven't. To be fair, I have seen very few of them, 
Um, in fact, I've seen one. I've just been busy with other stuff, and I thought I'll go online eventually and have a good geese. But we've got some of us who are in the cast, we have got a WhatsApp. So I'm sort of up to date on how everyone's being portrayed just through that. But no, I, one day I'll sit down and have a look. Oh, God, I know what I did in my exit interview with. Oh, please <coughs> tell me they didn't. They didn't. Oh, your tirade of swearing at the oh, end? My, yes, my yeah. filthy <laughs> sewer man. Don't, oh, no, didn't make the cut. Did it make yeah, right at the very end oh, of the episode. God. So, oh, um, Sorry, sorry, the, the, that's the, terrible. I mean, the, the, the fragmented nature of media now, there'll be some people listening to this that would have seen the show. Um, there'll be a lot that wouldn't have even seen the show, but you, you kind of got shafted at the end. So there was an elimination challenge with you and uh, Matilda Rice. Yeah. Um, you lost, and then you thought Jordan, your team... Was going to save me. Who do you are know these people, by the way? Yeah. Well, you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know who Matilda is. Yeah, yeah Matilda. Was, was it like that for you? You'd know Tamariti, Steve Price, Matilda. Yeah, Did I you didn't. Know I, any other I didn't know Steve Price because I don't really follow sport much. But he's a fantastic man, and I've got to know him after the show, really more than anything. Um, I didn't know. I, I knew Blair. Blair. Oh, Blair Strang. Yeah, yeah he's ringing he's from Shortland Street. Back yeah, in the yeah, day. yeah, yeah. The guy from Shortland Street. He became known on as uh, on the shoot. Uh, Jordan is the dude who presents Lotto. The Lotto guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so he he, he had that captain. He yeah. had like a pass card or whatever you want to call yeah. it. So he could have kept you in the competition. Yeah. Um, and you were under the under the impression that that's what was going to happen. He was going to throw you a lifeline. Do you know why I was under that impression? Because he told me he was going to <laughs> save me. And I'm that kind of transparent, you know, tell it as it is. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not a backstabby uh. type. And I know people say, oh, Mary, it's just a game and, you know, let it go. But actually, I think the way you play the game is, is reflective quite of who you are. Mm. And maybe I'm just old and conservative, but I, I just do it the old school way. You With know, integrity. Say, yeah, well, well, I don't know. I don't want to sort of beat myself up too much in, in terms of, mm. you know, elevate myself too much. But in the old days, if you said you're going to do something or I'm going to do something for you, hey, guess what? We did it. Mm. But I know he kind of was working within the parameters of the game. But still, I think if he was not wanting me on the team and I was first to go and I was the weakest link and all of that, man, I can accept that. I mean, I'm not two years old. He just should have come up to me and said, well, hey, Mary, I know I've said I'll save everybody, but actually I'm not going to save you. And I'll go, that's sweet. And so I would have gone in knowing I am absolutely up for the chopping block. But the fact, and I'm really embarrassed, <laughs> that A, I get a screw up the spelling of victorious, but also I really genuinely thought he would save me. <laughs> <laughs> so I got fully shafted. I mean, I'm so naive, aren't I? It's pathetic. So, um... At, at the end, uh, there was a swearing ty tirade. By the way, was that serious or playful? Like at the time? Oh, uh, in retrospect, it was pretty playful. And I thought it would never make yeah. the cut. I thought there is no way that that will make the cut. Oh, there was a lot of beeps through it. Well, there would have to be a number of. But, but then, then, then you laugh at the end, you cackle at yeah, the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. Look, it, yeah, and I'm, you know, like I'm 100 years old. I mean, get perspective. I had, um, you know, I, I was still kind of in a state of shock. No one wants to leave. Mm. But, but, and, and no time is a good time to leave. However, you know you are going to leave, and when that time does arrive, yeah, there's actually quite a lot to process mm. about it all. And I wasn't happy the way that challenge went and everything because I knew the word. I just sort of mucked mm. up my I O U S at the end, like mm. um, <laughs> but panicked. panicked. Uh, how many how many days were you there? Um, that's a really good question. I'm going to say about seven. Right. Fuck. That's a long time, eh? Yeah, do you know the thing that, that really, a long time. really, really, really got to me was the lack of sleep. I couldn't give a shit about mm. the food, believe it or not. I, um, it was the lack of sleep. Man, I'm a nine-hour-a-night girl, mm. and I can't do it on nine minutes. And when the, those bunks literally are just a few hunks of wood with a bit of hissy and sack, <laughs> I was fucking miserable. I really was, <laughs> along with everyone. Uh, Steve Price apparently sat on his and broke it. <laughs> right. oh, is, is that why, um, do you think that's part of the reason Tama Eti, in, in the same episode that you get eliminated, he sort of taps out, self-eliminate. He, he tapped out. <laughs> was it he, a sleeping arrangement? <laughs> no, apparently he was he was hard ass. He, he was actually sleeping on, right. the, on the floor. Right. Yeah, so no, I, I he wasn't on my team, so I didn't actually get to know him particularly well. Mm. Um, uh, and that was the downside to leaving sort of reasonably mm. early, is I was starting to get to know my people, mm. but I never made the merge, so I never got to mm. to see much of the others. Do you think um, part of it, like deciding to let you go rather than stick to his word, do you think part of that's like ageism? 
Well, that's a really good question. I don't know is the short answer. And so you, you're, you're 59, you're, you're 60 next year, but you're, um, you're incredibly fit and you're in great shape. Uh, well, actually, I really... What over- was that noise for? No, no, I really <laughs> overrated my physicality because, of course, I, I rotate around people about my age, right? Mm. And, yeah, oh, so you're fit for age. I probably, but 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 I'm pathetic up against these young, fast, strong, flexible, gorgeous things um, who are just starting out in life. But I thought, no, 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 I can take them on. I'll be sweet. I'll be good. I've got endurance, man. I might not have speed, but man, I've got endurance, and oh, I've got strength, man. I can bloody push this weight and that weight, and I'll be sweet. Mary, get a grip. <laughs> it was terrible. I like. I mean, I can hold my own to a degree, but and I'm not dumping on someone who's 59, but. But no, no, it's hard out there in mm. physical land. I feel like, I mean, we've only been going 10 minutes and you, you've made a few like a, f- a few comments about yourself. And I don't know if they're self-deprecating God. or... Is this therapy? Hey? Is this therapy? No, well, you said, you, you made a comment before you said, I'm, I'm like 100 years old. And you said, th- then there was a comment about food and you, you, you know, you, you pointed oh, okay, to your okay, body. Okay, okay, okay. Well, no, Is that I'm self-deprecating a, or... No, 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 no. I, no I'm, I'm a realist. I mean, I could easily take off 10 kgs in fact I think it'd be in a I'd be in my best interest to um so I accept that so when I say the food didn't bother me you look at me and think oh well here's a girl who's about 10 kgs over she could actually do with oh, I wouldn't know. think that at all I think you look yeah I think you look fabulous for your age you look oh, you fit could. and healthy and vibrant well yeah except for my and eyes you, and, <laughs> and you're um you're an exerciser too like you do yeah, adventure yeah, do. races you, yeah you, I do I, I read an interview with you and you said you saw I mean you this feels like one of those things you say, but you're never going to actually do. You saw Richie McCord do one of those God's own races, and you were like, oh, I want to do that. And they bloody cancelled it. <laughs> They've cancelled it this year, because what I thought I would do is go down and volunteer um, at God's own. And bugger me, a couple of weeks ago, I found out that the bureaucracy and the cost of the bureaucracy of staging something as awesome as God's mm. own has just got so expensive oh, that, I can that they no can do. Yeah. And it just pisses me off. You know, you've got to be cones here, stop a road here, put a dude there, put a sign there, da 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 And I think, oh, chill, man. Just let them run from that tree to that tree <laughs> and put a bit of health and safety in. But just relax. These are adults. They know what they're getting in for. Yeah, yeah. And I think the fact that it has got to a point where awesome and authentic races like God's Own are up on the chopping block because they simply can't afford all the bullshit, all the, the paperwork and all the nonsense required to stage them under all the regulations mm. that there are. And I was really disappointed because I thought, if I go and volunteer and then maybe next year, because I've had a few mates do it, I thought, yeah, I'd be a starter actually for that. Mm. Yeah, but I thought I'd just start soft and volley first. So what, what do you do for fitness these days? You've done a bunch of marathons, right? You've done yeah, London, yeah, done Paris, yeah, done Rotorua. Five. Yeah, but Susan Boy actually, um, she was responsible for me doing the third Rotorua marathon that I did. And she rang me up one day, this was about 10 years ago or whenever, and she said, mate, no, you need Susan on the show. Have you had her? Oh, I would love to have done. Oh, Susan yeah, no, no, she's me. cool, man. She's awesome. And she, said, she mate, I went, <laughs> mate. She said, "What are you doing next week or whatever?" And I said, "I don't know." She said, "Come and walk the um, Rotorua Marathon with me." And I went, "Yeah, how hard can it be? Forty-two k's walk." I said, "Awesome idea. Yep, I'll be there." And so I get down to Rotorua. We're on the start line. She said, "Mate," and I said, "Mate, here we are." And she. Heads out, man. First 10Ks, no problem. And then I'm really in Struggle Street. I think this walking malarkey is hard. <laughs> we get to the back of the paddock. You would have done real a few times, have you? No, I've ne- never done it. Oh, never mate. done it. It's like iconic, though. And uh, when I was growing up, I was in a yeah, running family, and mum and dad used to, It was called the Fletcher Marathon back then. Um, yeah. And they used to run it every year. Yeah. But it seems... Oh, but you get telly though, right? Oh, at the back yeah, of the lake. You know, it's brutal, man. And um, so we're at the back of the paddock, right? So at about the halfway point. And her phone rings. And it's one of her 300 children saying, mum, 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 something about you've got to pick me up because dad can't. And she hangs up and she goes, mate. And I go, mate. She said, we've got to run. <laughs> <laughs> so she says to me at the 25k mark, we're running to the end. I mean, this is an individual who had not trained for this. So that was my last experience on Rotorua. Mm. It, it was awesome as we came down, because we're exactly the same age, right? She sprinted down the, the chute. And she was really good. She sort of slowed down for me, and we, but we eventually got to the finish line. She sprinted down. She didn't care about the medal. She just jumped over into her car off to get her kid. She is a legend, man. How did you guys become friends? Well, we probably just met through, I think, Good Morning, 
similar age and just our paths have crossed at various do's and things and I you know I just like her you know I sort of gravitate towards that sort of honesty and she's fit and she's at the top of her game you know back in the day I, and she was on um celeb island wasn't she yeah i was gonna, I was gonna ask you that next like yeah. did, did you consult her yeah did yes, you consult, I did. you did oh yeah <laughs> yeah she was re- she was really insightful she was great right because she she threw a tantrum on it like she like plonked herself down in the sand in one of the episodes and like had a like a full grown like a toddler tantrum it was amazing tv <laughs> but she's um she was really good she said you know play your own game i because I, I just don't have the the bandwidth, I can't stand that word, but I just don't have the capacity to play all the bullshit, mm. you know, alliance this and alliance that and talking to that person, not that person. I just wanted to just get through every single day and be an honest player. And I think she she was sort of of a similar variety. Mm. She said, no, nah, you know, it's complicated enough without having to get into those weeds. And she sort of advised me on what to take because I snuck a whole lot of stuff in. <laughs> I snuck in. Cause like they, what? Like food supplies? No, or no, no. I snuck in uh, um, lots of earplugs. So I had earplugs for everyone. I snuck in a pillowcase because you're not allowed a pillow. And I took an extra puffer which they let me th- through with, but that could create a pillow. Um, I snuck in salt. God, rice without salt is a terrible thing. Uh, a few spices, you know, just sort of bits and bobs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's very, I could not it's very mumsy. I could not, spices and salt. <laughs> but I could not believe they didn't find them yeah. because it really was like going through an airport when they were checking our stuff. And I had some stuff confiscated, like my big eyeshadow pack. <laughs> It's like it's television, mate. Standards. Oh, I was going to ask you about the makeup thing because the um the the scenes I've, I've seen it didn't, didn't look like you were you were wearing makeup, and I uh, well, I, I, th- I thought uh, I w- probably seventy percent of the time I was. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And yeah, did 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 many people like sort of wear makeup or? Well, I think cause it's one of those things you you want to look good on t- on telly, well, yeah, don't but you? But also, there's a lot of downtime. Yeah. There's tons and tons of downtime. And uh, so, what else do you do? But well, you go <laughs> for a face. swim. You walk in the woods. You you know, put your face on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We just did it just to kill a bit of time. Yeah. So that's um, Celebrity Treasure Island. Uh, who, who who will you remain like actual friends with? Do you oh, think? I think there's probably a hardcore. Mitty was great. Um, Blair's fantastic. Uh, you know, some of those young comedians are absolutely awesome. Yeah. The, yeah. No. No. There's. It'll be good. You mm. know. I, fe- I feel with most of them, all good. Yeah. yeah. So okay, let's go. Let's go right back. So, y- y- why did you decide to become a journalist? So, y- young Mary, you're at school. What do, What did your parents do? Um, well, one's a teacher and one's a nurse. They're both actually. My father just died right. about a month ago, actually. Oh, I'm so, sorry to hear that. Oh, oh, thank you. No, no, he was in terrible condition. Mm-hmm. As and I and I mean that in the sense that uh, he. It's a really terrible thing to watch a parent who was fit and active and cerebrally really, you know, in tune and everything just deteriorate. I don't know. Are your parents alive? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah they thankfully. Are. I think, um, how old was your dad? Like uh, in he, his 80s? He, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He was about, he was a month off turning mm. 86. Yeah. yeah. yeah my, my parents are both uh, both alive. Mum's 71. She still runs marathons. She's going to be around for a long time. Dad's in his late 70s. He's in, he's in Wellington. He's, he's had no health complications, but I'm, um, I know... That, that I need to be more tolerant with them and spend more time with them. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, do make that time up because, um, oh, so he was based in Christchurch because mum died about mm. seven, eight years ago. And since her death, his deterioration has been pretty obvious. And then we moved him into this kind of Somerset thing. And I don't know, it just sort of felt like a bit of a holding pen. Yeah. And it was awful. And then he got really sick. And, and those that last month was actually terrible. And so people say, oh, so... Physically or mentally or both? No, uh, oh, I think the, he was on a yeah. bit of a mental decline. He was just depressed. He just, he was so, he was in such pain. His body was really shutting down. And um, he, he was depressed because I'm like, who wouldn't be actually under those conditions? And I don't know, those places just seem like little rabbit huts all sort of stacked mm. together. I don't know, I found the whole thing all a bit depressing too, to be fair. But anyway, he um, he died and, and I just, is sad and, and is sort of, fit, you know, that, that's it. That's that generation gone. Um, I'm really glad he's out of that pain and misery. Yeah. It's a funny kind of weird thing in your head. You miss them and, you know, sometimes I'll go to pick up the phone to give him a bell and and then I think, oh, of course, he's not there. But I do have three mm. siblings. So I'm the third of fourth. And my sister was, my old big sister was fantastic with him. My Andrew, my, my brother Andrew's down there. He's boots on the ground, so he was there. And my other brother, Dave, who's in Wellington, he... Um, he, you know, he and I, between us, you know, used to go down quite mm. a bit and see him. So, yeah. 
Mm. Still leaves a big hole though, eh? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a sort of crazy hole, really. Yeah. But we're tight, you know. As siblings, um, we're pretty tight. Like we're not in each other's pockets, but there are twelve grandchildren, so we've all had a bunch of kids, and we try and get together, and it's it's good. But the four of us actually dealt with the estate because one brother's an accountant, so he sorted all that. So we didn't have any, all of that dross to mm. scrap out. Um, you know, it's all been fairly straightforward. And yeah, as I say, we're, we're tight. And I really feel for those that are in family situations where there's a rogue sibling and it all just turns <laughs> nasty. Um, it must be awful because it's hard yeah, enough as yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. So a teacher and a nurse. So you, you tell them you want to become a journalist. They are supportive? Um, well, I left university and I decided I was going to be a lawyer. And so I went straight from school because I went to boarding school down in Christchurch and I did a first year of law at Canterbury and I actually couldn't stand it. I found it really hard, really dry. It was just graft and I didn't connect with it. I didn't know any lawyers. The family didn't know many lawyers. I just sort of had no relationship. I just thought it sounded flash to be, you know, go off and be a lawyer. So I stopped that. I went back to Wellington where mum and dad were based, lived at home for a bit, finished off a BA and then it was really only in the tail end of that BA that I thought I started working at student radio and there was something about the broadcasting I really liked. I didn't really even know what journalism was. And then I said to my parents, look, there's a journalism course up in Auckland. I might go and do that. What's journalism? Well, no, no, no. They're, they're not as stupid people. They knew what it was. But I don't think the career path of it was as obvious all those years ago. And once I got into the journalism school here in Auckland, man, I thought, I have found home. Yeah, like your tribe, your people. Oh, my people mm. and the work, and I loved it. I actually loved it. I would get out of bed, you know, at all happy as it wasn't, oh, God, I've got to get to that lecture or that lecture. I just thought, yay, I'm going to journalism today. <laughs> and so I just it took me a while. So if you're panicked about, oh, what are your kids going to do? Or if you're a kid and you're thinking, what am I going to do? And my kids are at that stage now. I think just give it some time, man. Just give it some time. It'll, 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 it'll arrive. It'll fall into place, yeah. 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 So then, and then what's your first job? Are you into print or radio? No. Well, fortunately, um, of the 16 of us that got into the ATI course back in the day, I was the only one interested in broadcast. The rest all were more interested in print. So when they were trying to find us work experience and things like that, I, I sort of had the full choice because no one wanted to go into radio. Oh, I was particularly keen on radio in those days. And so I got placements with Radio New Zealand, and that, when I finished the course, took me to Hamilton, and then Tomaranui, and then Nelson, and then Wanganui. So I did the full RNZ Tiki Tour. And then after a couple of years of that, I won a scholarship to go and work in Japan. So I went up to Japan and I worked as Radio New Zealand's correspondent up there. And it was boom time, you know, the economy was buzzing and mm. it was all, you know, a big trading partner and all the rest of it. And I also taught some English up there. Wow. And it, wh how did you end up on TV? And well, I came, I came back after yeah. three years of being up in Japan and I worked for Communicado uh, with Neil Roberts and some people might remember that name. And I worked on a few documentaries and uh, big, big shows like New Zealand at War. I don't know, that was a pretty epic for the time we put that together. And then one day I read in the paper, because I think we had newspapers back then, that they were <laughs> looking for a host for a thing called Good Morning. And I thought, and I was just sort of reading the job description, I thought, well, that's a bit of me. I, yeah, maybe I could give that a crack, surely. And I'd had a bit of TV experience reading the news at local TV, ATV, I think we called it then, and had done some other sort of random bits and bobs. And I rang them and they said, nah. No, we're not interested in you. We don't know who you are, and go away. And I thought, right, let's just pester here because I really do think <laughs> I, I want to be uh, at least auditioned. All I wanted to do was be on the audition list. And it was the likes of Paula Ryan and Susie Aiken and Belinda Todd. You know, these were the big, yeah, the big the, names, the big the names of the day. Yeah, massive names. And um, so I pestered and pestered, and I said, please, end of the day, end of the day, five minutes. That's all I want. It's all I, you know, just. Could you give me a go? And so they relented and they said, yes, okay, you can come in at 4.30, but it's just going to be 10 minutes. And, you know, they were just ticking a box, really. And the night before, I was so stressed about it that I went out on the tiles with a bunch of friends. <laughs> that we doesn't had, seem like the greatest prep. <laughs> we had <laughs> such a huge night. And I waltzed into that audition the next day, hung over, my hair coming out every direction, looking terrible, feeling worse, and as I got out of the lift, 
Paula Ryan was coming towards me and she was so beautiful and coiffed and white suited and her hair was mint and I thought, what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> and I sat down and went, hi, yeah, I'm the girl who's really pestered you to be on this audition list and here I am. I was thinking of booze. <laughs> I had had a shower, I know that much. <laughs> and the rest, as they say, is history. Yeah, you must have nailed it, because you did that job. Um, but there, there'll be a lot of people listening or watching to this that won't even remember Good Morning, because... Um, no, it was that long ago, because I was, I left when um, I was pregnant with the twins, and they yeah, 2003, you were on for 1997 to 2003. Yes, I did seven years, didn't I? Yeah, uh, was right? yeah it was crazy, crazy. I, I remember... Um, I remember watching it. Me and, me and JJ, we'd, we'd do breakfast radio, then we'd go home and we'd turn the TV on, and it, it was almost like, um, at the time that you were on it, a lot of it was almost like talkback radio, but on yeah, TV, yeah. like you'd have calls. So you'd be sitting there and watching, you'd be talking to people on the phone, and you'd, you'd, you, you didn't have a very good poker face. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd be like screwing your face. It was just, it was fantastic to watch and oh. see your facials as you were talking to, talking to crazy people on the phone, on yeah. TV. Yeah. And uh, you couldn't but hide your disdain a lot of time or you'd disagree. Uh, yeah, but it's a a talkback's a terrible format for television yeah. because what are your visuals? Like the presenter's face, boring. Mm. And back in those days, we used to have faxes, so no emails would come in. And so I had to often get out of my chair and go over to the fax machine, which was part of the set, pull off the faxes and try <laughs> to serve, decipher these handwritten, moronic faxes. And, and it would go, and every time the fax machine sent a fax, it would go, beep, 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 beep. I think, surely there is a button we can push that can shut that thing up. But um, we had a ton of fun on Good Morning. It was morning. great. I feel like it got really fluffy after you left. Um, oh, oh. They went through a whole lot of hosts, like uh, Stephen Gray and Brendan Well, he was Pongier on with me. And Hay yeah. Hayden Jones. Hayden Jones. Did he do it? I don't know. I kind of lost track with it because... Of I got, you, like, you, you, were the, you were the sort of stability of it for in the yeah, last millennium. By virtue of the fact that I was there so right. long. Um, when they rang me to say, hey, guess what? We're moving the show down to Avalon. And I said... Oh, and so pack your bags and we're off to Avalon. I went, I'm not going to Avalon. Um, and that afternoon I found out I was pregnant with twins and we already had a one-year-old. And I said, I am most definitely going to Avalon. And so I rang the back and I said, I'm not, I'm not doing it, I'm done. Uh, and I think moving it to Avalon is a really stupid idea. And I think it's a stupid idea because we were in Struggle Street getting talent sometimes being in central Auckland. Mm. Avalon is a million miles away from Wally Airport. And I remember on the first day of the year that I was not doing it, poor Lisa Manning, she, she got the gig. There was fog and there was all sorts of upset in terms of pe getting people out to Avalon. Because it is, it's a million miles away. Yeah, it's, it's about a 50, 50 k's or mm. 40 k's or something. And so that poor woman had to sit there and basically ad lib for two hours because no bastard could get in and be on the show. Mm. Oh, it's terrible. So I thought, oh, well, made my point, but anyway. Mm. It's, so oh, yeah, the host before you was Liz Gunn. That's right. Are, are you friends with Liz Gunn? No. Do you know... Yeah, because she's like a conspiracy theorist now, eh? Like she she went a little bit off the rails during the the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. I haven't clapped eyes on her. Okay. No, no, no. We were never mates. No. Okay. I think she did breakfast and we shared a dressing room for a bit. Right. But, um, no, 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 no. We we were not kindred spirits at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, no further questions. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, I, keep asking the questions, uh, but I've got nothing. No, to no, say. no. Um, I thought there might be a story there or a thread. Um, yeah, you used to bring your cat into the show as well. I did. Was Louis? Was Louise. Louis. Louis. Was that not a genius idea? No, it was great. Yeah, it was great. Because some people thought, God, is this woman the mad cat woman? But I just thought it would be a nice sort of homely thing to do. It was a pain in the ass bringing him in. Puss, 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 puss. We've got to go to work now. Puss, 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 puss. And I get him into the crate, and then of course I had to set up the whole litter box and everything. And the producer didn't really like it as a thing. The lighting guys hated it because he used to run behind the site and sit on all the lights. And you know, potentially bust the lights. And then I was having a very serious convo with someone, and Louis jumped on the piano, which was set up on the other side of the studio for a band segment that we were going to have in the show. And I'm in this deep convo with someone, and all I hear is dong, 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 as he's walking across. <laughs> oh, that's <the> amazing. <laughs> that's so good. But I thought it was. <clears throat> I like yeah, the looseness of it. Yeah, got to keep it loose. And as I kind of relaxed into it, and and started to sort of call it my own, I said. Okay, I won't bring him in every day, but let me just bring him in a couple of days. And isn't it interesting, 20 years down the track, people still remember I brought the cat in. Mm. <coughs> it was great. I think it was great t great TV. So you sort of left on your own, 
your own terms? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you didn't want to go to Wellington. Didn't um, want, uh, but also I was pregnant, pregnant with twins, and it was hard enough actually doing it with a one-year-old. Because two hours, well, you'll know this, two hours of TV every single day by yourself. It's, is, a, it's a lot of content to film. It's a lot of, you know, I had a fantastic team around yeah. me, but at the end of the day it fell on me. It was my name on the marquee, and um, it was a, just an absolute shit ton of mm. work, at which I'm really grateful for the experience. I could not have done it with three kids mm. under a... 18 months, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, you can tell me to piss off with this question if you want, but um, were, were your kids conceived naturally or fertility yep. treatment? They were. Yeah. yeah, and all of my siblings have got twins. Yeah. Wow. It's yeah. just a gene thing. So eh? that, that's my that's my whole vibe right. is we've got, my sister's got boy-girl twins, my brother's got boy-girl twins, everyone's got singletons in the mix. We've got a cousin with twins, we've got twins everywhere. And uh, so there's three sets of twins out of our four siblings. And which makes up the 12 pretty quickly because we went from none to 12 pretty quick. And no, 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 it was good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, like it's a lot of children. and But to be a twin is not that special in our fam because they're <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Dime a dozen, yeah. Big deal. Yeah, big deal, big deal, big deal. Yeah, so in your, your husband, Jim, you guys are still together, eh? Yeah, we are. Yeah, is that all right? Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? <laughs> Oh, no, I, th- I think in, in this day and age, like the divorce rate's like 50% or something, so I think that's really special. Yeah, but can I actually say on that that I'm really impressed with your relationship with JJ? Mm. That blows me away. And where was I? Oh, maybe now that I can see, was I reading something while waiting in the supermarket queue? And you went holidaying with your respective partners <laughs> oh, yeah. together. What is that like? <laughs> well, yeah, we went to, this was uh, like December, December last year, January this year, we went to Bali, the four of us. Yeah, I know. Um, it was really good. Like, um, yeah, we've got a, yeah, we, it's a it's a great relationship. It's a relationship I cherish so much. There was just I, I, I went through some mental health stuff, and I I um yeah there, there was a time there where I thought oh god it'd be just it'd be better off if I just wasn't here. I had no value to anyone's life, and it, you know when 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 people are depressed and they think that of course it's not true and it's a silly way to think. Um, but I, but I thought that and anyway I got through that dark period, and then I thought I I just need to make an effort to make sure I feel in my heart I'm adding more value to other people's lives. So I do, I do anything I can for JJ, and she does so much for me as well. But That's a relationship I cherish. Oh, which is absolutely yeah. awesome. And, you know, you can be held up as an absolute example of how to mm. um, to do divorce. Yeah. You're divorced, aren't you? Um, oh, no, we're still, we're still, yeah, we're still like, oh, yeah, legally whatever. married. Yeah. Um, but, but we've but been, been separated for like five years. But is it a little weird? Going on holiday together and with respective partners? No, nah, it wasn't weird. Uh, on the on the flight back, I thought actually that could have been it could have been a recipe for disaster because you know we were having some bin tangs and there were co- you know there was alcohol involved, um, but there was nothing weird about it at all. It was just um, yeah yeah very re- yeah she's respectful of my new partner. I'm, I, I really like her boyfriend and it was good. The, one, the, the, the main question everyone asks, which is really weird, it's like, oh, what was the sleeping arrangement? And it's like, what do you fucking think? <laughs> like, we had, a, we had a villa with two bedrooms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, there was no, like, bed hopping or nothing kinky going on or anything like that. Yeah, no, 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 I didn't even go to that because, yeah. you know, I'm old school. I just, I just <laughs> am really impressed with the way yeah. you've managed that. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, full creds. Yeah, so, so you and Jim, did you meet at journalism school? No, no, God, no, no, oh. we met here. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm pointing to TVNZ. Right. Up at the mothership. And he was working on the home show. And I had seen the home show, guys. a real admirer of Paul Holmes. And then oh, this, likewise. Huge oh, fan. Yeah, like, man, like, he is the man. He is the man. He, he was just absolutely the broadcaster that you want to be. <laughs> Were you petrified of him? Um, <laughs> yeah. No, no, I wasn't, actually. I, what was I of him? I was admiring. I was so admiring. I'd sort of, if he was in makeup and I'd be in makeup, I'd even, you know, four or five years into knowing each other, I'd go, <gasps> it's you, mm. Paul. Oh, Paul. Paul fucking Holmes. <laughs> Paul. Yeah. Uh, so Jim was working on that show, and I remember watching the show a couple of times thinking, God, who's this Jim Mora? He's he's good, man. He can string a sentence together. He's good. <laughs> he's got kind of got the, the vibe. And then we eventually met uh, there at the mothership. And we met maybe about three months into my being on Good Morning. So I had no scandalous past or anything. It just, we met and... The rest, as I say, is history. So we're... So, so love, it, love at first sight? Uh, yeah, pretty much. We moved in together after about three or four months. Wow. Yeah, we're just up the road here in Ponsby. Yeah. What's he doing now? Is he still at Radio News... Yeah, national program, he's, Radio he's, News he's at RNZ. Right. And um, doing the Sunday show. Uh, shoot, what did I say? Show. 
And that is a big chunk of work because, you know, the Radio New Zealand audience, they want every T crossed and every I dotted, the audience that is. <laughs> they don't want any mistakes. And he's a real swat. Like, he will read the books. He won't interview someone and just read the back of the book and sort of make it up on the fly. And he, he takes it seriously. He works really bloody hard. And that Sunday show, he comes on at 18. So it's four hours he's got to do. It's a lot of talk. Mm. I know it's only once a week, but there's a lot of prep that goes into that. Yeah, I can imagine. And can I just say, I'm very sorry to hear Kim Hill's moving on. Or not moving yeah, on. She's I just would, decided would, she's done. She. I would love to do a podcast with oh, her. Get she's her intimidating, on. eh? She's awesome. Do you mm. know, I just love the fact she's, you know, she's fearless. She doesn't give a shit what anyone thinks. Mm. You can get to that age and stage, can't you? Mm. But I, I feel like she's been, <laughs> she's been like that even before she was at that age and stage. Oh, she's always she, been like that, hasn't she? Oh, She's fantastic. Yeah, she's a brilliant you know, interviewer. So she's got to do something else, right? Um, I think she's going to sort of stay on in some sort of okay. part-time capacity. I don't know. They might use a morning report. I have no clue. But I, when I read it, I didn't have any special intel on this. I read it like everyone else mm. in the Herald or wherever it was. And I just thought, wow, now there is a broadcasting icon. Mm. And so you and, you and Jim, you, um, God, you must have had your challenges over the years. Like a, the, you, you don't, no, you you don't oh, have a three-decade-long or two-decade-long relationship with someone. What are we up to? 97, 97 to 97. what equals, what's that equal? 20, 26 years. Oh my God, is it? Yeah, like quarter of a century together. Quarter of a century together, three kids, including twins. Yeah, it must have been some tough times. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. It was really hard, because when the twins came along, he was doing mucking in, and he was also doing some radio stuff, and so he was barely there, is my point. And it's hard enough with three kids under two, and then, you know, not having your partner around. Um, but he was, he's always absolutely supportive. Like, he is the man. He is as solid as a rock. He, you know, any problem, and he's clever. Like, he's, like, really clever. And he thinks things through, and he will always deliver a very solid reason for why he has done or is going to do something. And he, um, so, yeah, of course, of course. Gee, we've had some massive arguments over the years. Well, name me a couple that hasn't. Oh, they must be. Yeah. So, I, I can imagine you two arguing. It must be very intellectual. <laughs> I hate the way you stack the dishwasher. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, I know, I, you two argue. For some reason, I imagine it like a high school debate. Like, you get your three minutes. And Don't talk to me about debates. <laughs> I'm up to here with debates. Uh, yeah, he's, no, he's good. He's reasoned, mm. and um, but I suppose as we both get older, you know, you get stuck in your ways a bit more. And I can't stand the way he stacks the dishwasher. I mean, it's... What do you mean? Like, knives down or knives up or... Uh, Oh, no, no, we've got one of those ones where you pull out the top thing and oh, just okay. slide them along. No, he d it's just wasteful the way he does it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, yeah, I'll move on, Mary. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm probably the same as him. Like, uh, if I looked up my model of dishwasher on YouTube, there's probably a tutorial that tells you how to do it, and it would be uh, five minutes of my time, and it's probably an eye-opening learning experience, but instead I just chuck the pots in, put the bowls in. Do you put pots in the dishwasher? Yeah, you're not supposed to. No, well, I don't, no, doesn't it stuff their handles? But anyway, <laughs> oh, it depends on the, the handle variety. But, 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 but the thing is, it takes up too much room. That means you don't yeah, get all those yeah. sort of shitty plates in. Um, but I think it's a very interesting exercise going to people's places and seeing how they stack the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 But you're enjoying the experience of aging with someone? Like getting into this stage of your life with someone? Yeah. And going through these stuff? Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Um, we just are doing our own thing. And... Um, so we're in each other's pockets, but we're not. And don't forget, we've got two children still living at home. And Are they the twins? No. No. So we've got one twin down in Canterbury. She's doing engineering because all she wants to do is get into Formula One. Isn't that funny? Wow. I didn't even know is that. It a, did she watch Drive to Survive? Or she something? bloody did. <laughs> she did, is that man. The, well, after she after did. watching that, I, I, um, I'd, I'd define myself as 100% heterosexual, but I want to get into Formula One. Yeah, I tell you. Jesus, she, what a good-looking sport. What is really interesting about her in engineering, like, we, we didn't care what the any of the kids did. We just, you just, do you what know, you want. Can't yeah. do, do whatever, just as long as you, you're good and you're happy and don't feel you've got to do anything. But anyway, so she decides in the seventh form, uh, that she, which was only last year, that she wants to go off and do engineering. I thought, oh, yeah, fair enough, great. Yeah, because wow. she's, you know, reasonably strong with physics and stuff. And... I said, why? What's your driver? <laughs> um, -ba -ba -chung. <laughs> <laughs> so guess where we're going in June? Guess where we're going to June? Oh, where is it? Monaco, Gold Coast? No, where, where's the... Silverstone, mate. 
Silverstone. Where's Silverstone? UK. UK. Wow. Yeah, so we're going, we're, you know, family, because it's always a job lot of mum and dad are paying, isn't it? Mm. And so we're all climbing into the plane and we're going up to Silverstone. I've got a really good mate in the UK who only lives an hour down the road. And so we're going to have the full F1 experience. Now, to be fair for me, it's just cars going round and round in circles. But she's donkey deep in it, and Jim's pretty into it. And Jack, who's Elizabeth's twin, uh, he's doing a commerce degree here in Auckland. He, um, he's he's pretty petrol heady too. Mm. Uh, so at least you know, it's three out of the five of us are into it. Yeah. Um. You you mentioned before. Um when I mentioned you and Jim arguing and how it must be like a debate, you, you said, don't get me started on debates. Um, <laughs> now, when when this podcast comes out, um, all the election debates will be over with. Um, at this stage, there's only been the one that was on TV One with uh, Jessica Much Mackay. Did you watch it? Uh, I sure did. But and? You, you, I, um, I, I, I thought um, Chris Luxon did a fantastic job. He sure did. Yeah. I was so proud of him. But, but I, I, I said to my partner afterwards, I said, I said because she was like, oh, you know, um, Luxon, Luxon pissed all over Hipkins. And I said, yeah, but if, if you're a, a staunch Labour, Labour voter, you probably think it's the opposite way around. I, I think you can read those things anyway. Yeah, you want, yeah. I can think you? your, your natural biases come into it and you want to really champion yeah. for your guy. Yeah. Um, so I, I bring this up. So you're working with um, Christopher Luxon. Yeah, I'm just one cog in the wheel. <laughs> he's got a fantastic team, a really solid team. He is um, he's a very, very nice man to work with. Mm. He's respectful, he's receptive to ideas. He works like a Trojan. I mean, we know what it's like to put graft in. Well, times it roughly what you and I do by 10, and that's his average day. Mm. And I thought he performed exceptionally well. Never, ever lose sight of the fact he's very new to this game. Like, he's five minutes in politics compared to the rest of the career politicians sitting in the Labour lot. And, you know, it's a hard game. Mm. Politics, man, it's a brutal, mm. brutal game. So, so what's what's your job? There, we can focus this on you rather than um, Christopher Luxon. But like, is it media training? Is that what you'd call it? I would call it yes. I think just tapping into some of the experience that I've had in TV and maybe some of the things that we say and we do and we look and we express and the language that we use. And but don't forget, as I say, he's got a really strong team around him. Uh, you know, their policy people and their comms people, they're, they're really awesome. And so I'm probably the cog in the chain that says, well, look, probably in a TV environment I'll do this, look here, do this, da, da, ch- take that out, maybe use that language, not that language. You know, it's mm. it's that sort of stuff. Right. But I'm... Just tinkering around the edges with a little bits and pieces. Does he, does he, need, he need to cut, cut back on saying look so much? Let's be clear. <laughs> Let's be clear. Is that another... <laughs> I but noticed look tr- the he, other day. Look... <laughs> He's trimmed that back enormously. I was very proud of him. <laughs> it's really hard, actually, when you get into a bit of a thing. You know, you get little catch, answers, catch, yeah. catch, catch, crazes, uh, catch phrases, and and then you'll stick with them for six months, and then you'll move on to something else. And he, he, but he got rid of that pretty quickly, actually, once mm. it was identified. But no, he, he, as I say, he's very, 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 super receptive, super receptive. It's not like you'll go, that's a really stupid idea, or no, no, he is not that guy. And he reads, and he works, and he barely sleeps. Yeah. Did you get out of David? I should listen to that one. What did you learn about him? Oh, he had some fabulous stories. Like he, he lost his mum uh, at quite a young age, like in his late teens, early twenties. Oh yeah. Um, so she was she was sick with cancer, so she had like a a bit, a bit of a a bit of a bit of a lead up. Like she knew she was going to die. Mm. Um, so she she recorded like a DVD for all her sons with just a basically like a, a message to give to their their partners when they when they meet the person they're going to marry. Yeah. And he's never watched it. Oh wow! I, I'm like, surely you must have had a curiosity. He's like, no, it's, it's not for me. It's for the person that I marry. So I'm like, what is it, like an instruction manual? And he's like, I don't know. I'm like, you must have talked to your brothers about it because surely there's a similar. He goes, no, we, we, we've never discussed it. Good Lord. So just, um, I don't know, I feel that the, ch- the chat with him sort of hum- humanised him a bit. Yeah. A lot of he's people sort of think really he's a bit clever. robotic. Yeah, very and smart. And from a media perspective, I mean, he's, he's gold, isn't he? He always comes out with those lovely sound bites. Yeah. yeah, real zingers. Do you know that he and Luxon actually lived literally next door to each other? Did he tell that story? No. Yeah, yeah, literally there's a hedge between them. This is back in the day. And so they know each other as, first and foremost, neighbours. So when Christopher was at Air New Zealand, David was literally in the house next door. Wow. Mm. Well, small world. Small world. We live in a village. <laughs> now they're going to have offices next yeah. to each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, maybe. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, did you, you're a great communicator, eh? And you're, you're fabulous on the mic. Do, do, do you want to do more front-facing stuff yourself? I'm thinking, why aren't you on ZB? Or... Oh, do you, you know, know you know you're very, very good. Oh, that's very kind. 
I certainly, yeah. The, Is it I by get, choice or? Oh, have they rung me and I said, come no, no, they haven't. Have I done ZB work before? Yes, I have. Have I done talkback before? Yes, I have. Uh, do I find it a little dispiriting? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Sometimes the when you've got a bit of profile and like this Celeb Island thing has, has sort of raised Elevated this, it, it again. just... The public scrutiny stuff, I mean, I'm not suggesting I'm coming out under major scrutiny, but you would not have invited me on here if I hadn't been on that show, right? And I don't know, as I get kind of older and wise, I think, really, do I want to walk down the street and go, oh, there's Mary, there's Mary? And it still does happen a little bit, and some people think I'm still on maternity leave from Good Morning. <laughs> it, which is, like, how this long is a are long children? gestation yeah, period. Yeah. How long are those children? <laughs> are they, are they, you know, five years? <laughs> I go, no, mate, they've all left school. But uh, I don't know. It's just nice the way you can have a bit of anonymity when, you are, when you're when you not actually doing that mm. front-facing stuff. I mean, what's it like for you when you go out running and things? People stop and go, mate, Dom, go Dom. Tell me about everything, Dom. Well, a, a, little, a little bit. But um, when it's uh, about this podcast and the conversations I'm having on the podcast, I actually really like it because it means you've made that connection with people. Um, but it's not... It's not a level of fame where it's, you know, you know I'm not Israel Adesanya, <laughs> put it that way. So it's like, it, it's nice. It happens a little bit, but not not yeah. enough for it to be annoying. I think it would be really, and it's been interesting, the thing working with Christopher Luxon is mm. um, that he has gone from not being recognised at all, and he could have walked down the street, to now actually having security around him. Mm. So, so as the leader of the opposition, and in, within the um, election campaign time, that's that's what happens. They, they get their own security. And... Everywhere he goes, he is recognised. Like, everywhere he goes. And sometimes I look at that and think, would I want to go back to that? I don't think so, actually. Mm. Oh, since you're back on Luxon, um, so there was one thing that happened a couple of months ago. I didn't ago. intend to, but no, I wanted no. to make that, compa- that no. comparison. That It's it's another layer, yeah. actually, when oh, you're completely. just... It doesn't matter where you are and what you do, you're being scrutinised yeah. because people recognise you. So th- there was a thing where he was doing um, some sort of speech in front of the cameras, and there was like a heckler from one of the other parties over the fence. Oh, yeah. I and called that the Kilroy. Oh, yeah. no, Kil- <laughs> Kilroy was here. <laughs> did um, uh, Luxon look flustered at that? Did, did you? Did you I've, I've not spoken to him about it. Oh, okay. No. No. No, I haven't spoken to him about that. Yeah. Because mm. everything moves so quickly. In this, Once uh, it's gone, it's gone. It's gone and moving on to the next thing, yeah. next thing. Everything is just, and that's why I was late today, because, you know, things just move and mm. what's required moves really, really quickly this yeah. time. Yeah. Jeez, we've been going for 50 minutes. We haven't got to your subway stuff yet. Have you, you got a little bit more time? Um, I have something. I have to be at. <laughs> How many more minutes have you got? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't want to say a cheeky ten. Okay, cool. Okay, so so you you leave. Good morning. Yes, um, I do. You have your twins. Yes, I do. And then, how old are the twins when you buy into a subway franchise? They were five. Five. Okay, so you have Six. maternity leave, home time with the kids, which well, is nice. It wasn't even maternity yeah. leave. I mean, okay. I, I, yeah. you know, I miss all of that. You know, good stuff. Uh, I just sort of sat at home. I did a few columns actually. Mm. Is sort of how I kept um, kept my hand in, and then got them the twins off to school, which means Rebecca Grace would have been seven. Yeah, yeah so twins were five, and I I was really interested in supermarkets actually because I had a really good friend who owns a supermarket, and I thought, gosh, that'd be a bit of me. Just get right out of broadcasting. Wouldn't it be cool just to get into a bit of hardcore retail? I'd love to do that, and then he said, go away and get some small retail experience. And just see if it's your thing, if you're cut out for it. And I thought, that's a good idea. So I went and Subway said, yeah, yeah, okay, no problem. Mm. Took the store on. And I um, I discovered after a couple of years, it, it's just not me. Probably the thing that Oh, you did it for a long time, though. Oh, uh, no, yeah, I, yeah, but I, I had... I, I, yeah. I disagree with that. I thought you made a real fist of it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, it was fine. Right. But did I love it? No. And the thing that I didn't particularly like was just the sheer stress of all the staff. At one point, um, I had about 15 staff. Are they going to turn up? Are they going to do a great job? Is it this? They've all got kind of like oh, issues. I th- and I think post-pandemic, it's probably even worse now. Do you know, I just thought, I'm paying you good money. I'm requiring you to do this job. Just do it. Mm. But it just doesn't work like that yeah. in that model. You know, you, you have to sort of almost mother them into mm. doing a good job. Because, <laughs> You're like a therapist. Oh, okay. <laughs> God. It, and I just I thought, I've got three kids at home. You know, I don't need another 15 children. Mm. Um, 
And that's the thing that probably turned me off. I know that if you get into the supermarket game and the further, or if you're the owner, you've got people doing HR and the management and all that sort of stuff. But still, it's just a sheer responsibility yeah, it's of looking after all of these people, treating them well, being a good boss. It's just, I just thought, it's just, this is not playing to my strengths at all. Mm. Um, is it good money, though, if you've got a Subway franchise that's humming? Yeah, 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 yeah but you've got to be there and you've got to put the work in. It's yes. like anything. Yeah, did, did, did you know Stacey Jones? I think yeah, he had yeah, one as well. Yeah, we did lots of talking. We He came on board about two years after me, and so we had a lot of conversations about it. Yes, yes, Stacey. Yeah, God, I've lost touch with Stacey. Where is he? Well, I think he's one of the um, one of the co-coaches of the Warriors. Oh, so he, he got out of Subway too, did he? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm I don't not know. sure. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you, so you went to Subway University in Brisbane? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was that like a two-week course? Yeah, it was pretty full on. It was really interesting. <laughs> so so what, 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 are you, what is there to learn in two oh, weeks? Uh, just all their systems. Right. Yeah, all their systems. Pr- the back end is pretty complicated. Just getting on top of the tech. And there was a really great tutor. Like, he was an absolutely inspirational tutor. And every day he just made all of that learning so interesting, so fun. And in the groups there were probably others. Oh, no more than 10 of us from memory. And oh, he was just absolutely incredible. Gosh, that was an inspiration. It sort of inspired me eventually to sort of go back to university and do some stuff. I just thought this learning journey stuff is good. It's good if you're in the right hands. Mm. But anyway, um, and, and so that's what it was about. There's actually a lot that goes on behind the scenes mm. that you've got to have your head around. And w- when you walk into a Subway store um, and it smells like amazing fresh bread, is that like a spray? like a, Or is no, that an actual... Not. I no, heard it was a spray. For me, it's a trigger. Right. <laughs> <laughs> PTSD. <laughs> oh, it wasn't that bad. But, um, but you can smell it. You know, yeah, like it smells amazing. A, a K down the road, yeah. can't you? It's, no, that's legit, the bread. There was uh, there was one thing during your subway days. Um, I think it was in the like the Herald on Sunday. They have like a. Uh, yeah, you have done your research. Yeah, they, they have like a, a section called Spy, which is like the the gossip pages. Oh yeah. And there was like a photo of you in your subway uniform and. Oh, I can't remember exactly what it said, but the the sort of undertone was almost like a fall from grace in a way. Oh, really? Oh, well, that's how I sort of, I, I don't know, that was a long time ago. Oh, okay. That's how I sort of read it, like, oh, she was on TV, oh, now I, she's got a store. Did yeah. you did you sort of sense? No, no, no. I, I volunteered myself out of television. And I needed yeah, to and, find Yeah, and you're running and a I, successful fucking business as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, so maybe in the eyes of the public, or whoever wrote the piece, thought that television is right at the top of the tree. Well, it's actually not. <laughs> It's just an arm, a branch. You know, some people might want to go off and do corporate stuff. Some people might want to do their own business stuff. Some people might want to be in television. Mm. Some people might want to work in a library. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter. No, not at all. I wanted an absolute break from the broadcasting. Don't forget, I was in that broadcasting donkey deep for so many years. And I really wanted, and I really did seriously consider a big, big shift in career. Um, and I'm really glad I was, my dear friend advised me so sensibly Go and try it at a small scale and then, you know, see if you'd be really up for the biggest supermarket mm. stuff. And I just, um, it was just not my jam. Yeah. But you, you but did it for years though, like eight years? Seven years. Seven, was it? Yeah. I had a bit of a gap in between and then I built that store, which is in the, On the called it Telecom Place yeah, in Spark. the Spark building. Sp- I, yeah. Across the road from yeah, Les Mills, a couple hundred metres from here. Yeah, which is great because I'd go there, go to the gym, come back over the road, go and back and forth, mm. back and forth. Yeah, it was great. That store's really awesome actually. How cool that you've had all these different careers. Well, two. Two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm, I'm thinking like the, the media training thing now. Like oh, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. Count as a so third that's, career. that's, uh, the, yeah. And then I thought, okay, what am I going to do? The kids are at school, everyone's happy, Jim's doing his thing, I'm here. And then I thought, why don't I actually just like give back? Well, that sounds a bit wanky, doesn't it? But what do I know? What do I really know? Yeah, I know journalism. Yeah, I know TV. Yeah, I know radio. Okay. Why don't I do it? Why don't I just actually start a bit of a biz where people can come to me for a bit of advice? And this is what it's morphed into. Mm. Transferable skills, right? Mm -hmm. In a way. Mm. Yeah. And it's cool. And you're 59 now, you turn 60... Next year. Yeah. How are you feeling about that? Are you comfortable with your age? Oh, yeah, I don't... Yeah. Yeah, yeah age is a number. I think it's a celebration, right? Like it's... um, well, it's, a, it's a number. You know, it's like... Well, no, what, what I mean is... um, And you, you'd be the same. You see a lot of people that aren't lucky enough to make it. So I think you've got to... Oh, yeah, yeah. God, at a health level. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I was actually thinking... I keep thinking, well, what am I going to do? Well, as I said before, we'll go off to Silverstone, which will be fantastic. Well... Like their cars running around the circle, but yeah. <laughs> uh, I thought I'd do sixty walks in the year. What do you think? 
Because I'm a walker, not a runner. 60 walks. How do you mean? Why 60? Oh, because you're 60 years old. Oh, genius. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but... <laughs> well, but <laughs> <laughs> oh no, or is it is that nap? Give, give, oh god. <laughs> well, that's it, I'm out. Uh, that's it. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of something a little different. 60, say, 60 walks like what? Like special walks, like Tongariro Crossing? or Yeah, but I've done all like of those, so it'd be a bit of repeat business on some of them. But I reckon between here and maybe the, when we go away in June, I'll knock off a few. I thought if I could do 60 decent walks, so there has to be a bit of criteria. They've got to be at least sort of 20 Ks plus, okay. right? That, that kind of vibe. Um, oh, yeah, because we're also going to do the El Camino while we're away. What's the El Camino? Excuse me. <laughs> it's taken an hour, and you, you've you, I, the mi- Al Camino, mate. Minute fifty-five. That's when Harry <laughs> Lambie started to get aggressive. No. <laughs> um, the Al Camino is the Pilgrim's Walk. Have right. you heard of a movie called The Way? No. Oh, right. So the El Camino is um, is what the old pilgrims used to do, and they're all heading to one place in northern Spain, right? So they'd come down from France, they'd come down from the UK, they'd come up via Portugal, and these walks, um, the seven of main ones, and they range in distance between about a hundred k's and about a thousand k's. Wow! And you just get on and you walk, and it's humbling. You have you know an assortment of epiphanies. You just trudge from. One town to the next town to the next town to the next town. You do it off the smell of an oily rag. Some people bike them, but you're actively encouraged just to walk. And to do the 1,000K, it takes about three months. And if you just put El Camino into the Google machine, you will read the most incredible stories of people and what they learned about themselves over the course of the walk, the people that they, they meet. And because of time constraints up there we're probably going to do one of the shorter ones which is about 150 k's and we'll just take our time we'll do that over about a week and it's just time for the family just to put one foot in front of the other you put your light pack on don't take a whole lot of shit with you you don't need it and we'll do it like the pilgrims do it i love that i think that's a great goal oh you well you'd run it of course wouldn't you yeah i'd I'd love to run it but walking's great and i think um you're doing 60 significant walks on your 60th year that's just an idea oh that's good because you say oh you're gonna have a big party and i think oh i don't know how big that i might have groups because my you know your friend groups are different sort of friend groups do i want to bring them all together i mean that just seems like Mm. a logistical nightmare so i thought maybe just a splattering of Little dinners and stuff, which would yeah. be nice. I oh, know it's a great idea. Yeah. I don't know. Do, I don't know. Jeremy, Why am I even thinking about it? It's just a day. Jeremy it? Corbett did that recently for for his birthday. He had like a series of of dinners because he's oh. like, I don't I don't want a party where I don't get to speak to everyone. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, so you have dinners over various nights. So I think um, that's great. But I you, used there's to work no rules. With him. He's awesome. Um, at More FM, we used to work together. Um, oh, were you at More FM? Yes, I was back in the early early days. Right. As his newsreader on his um, breakfast show. But he is he's over sixty though, isn't he? Mm, I think he's sixty now. Yeah. No, he's no. <laughs> is he? Is he just? I think he's sixty. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Um, but anyway, hey, um, I'll let you go because um, you've got to help a man become prime minister. Oh, stop. <laughs> Um, but thank you, you for having me. Thanks for coming over. It's been wonderful connecting with no, you. I've Gosh, you're no, talented. No, you're I've, really shared, I've shared nothing of you know real headlining, grabby nothing. I'm, apologies for that. Maybe I'm mm, just. It's it's not really it's not really about that, and it's not what I'm. No, it's yeah, it's not what I'm trying to do with this. Oh, well, good. It's just good. having did good it, good conversations did, with people. Yeah, I know. Did you <laughs> learn anything? Um, I think I learned a lot. Do you? That's the main thing. As long yeah. As you, yeah. I, when, when I when I go back and listen to it and um, and. Oh, by the way, if there's anything you want cut out, um, I'm happy to cut it out. Uh-huh. Uh, it's not just not about stitching anyone up here. It's just about having nice conversations yeah. and getting, allowing the the audience to get to know someone a little bit better. Mm. Yeah. yeah, no, that's okay. Um, what I was going to say was um, when I do my media training stuff, you know, just in the in the world generally, I say, you know, tell me something about yourself that no one would know because you know we always like a bit of surprise and delight. We like a bit of wow, mm. don't we? Have I? Have I given you any surprise and delight? Is there anything? No, you see? So I've got to actually practice what I preach and give you some fresh material. Oh, no, I don't know. I, th- I think there's probably lots of little gems there. Oh, okay, that you didn't know. Okay, yeah. fair enough. All right. That's oh, right. Job done. Yeah, no, that's great. Mary Lambie, thank you so much oh, for coming over. Blessings to you. Love that. Yeah, yeah, it's been one minute, uh, one hour and two minutes. Oh, I'll, let you, I'll let you go. I'll stop let you go. Go, go meet up with Luxy. Oh, stop it! Do you call him Luxy? <laughs> Oh, hey, by the way, one last thing. On the, on, the, on the debate the other night, this is the first debate with Jessica Much Mackay, um, Hipkins called him Christopher. 
He was calling him Christopher. Was that intentional? Oh, or no, was no, that he, a he literally he literally does not care. It's either Chris or Christopher. So everyone fluctuates between the two. Right. Oh no, but I wondered if it was like a deliberate ploy that Hipkins media people had told him, referred to him as Christopher. Oh. So there's a what? Or maybe he was just trying to differentiate because right. isn't it funny when the two stand there, they're sort of about the same height, they've got the same name, they said yes to a lot of those quick fire questions, or you know, they were agreed on them. <laughs> What's telling us about you? <laughs> but, he's, here. but, but he, he is, he's Christopher or Chris, he's it's like Michael, Michael, or Jim or James, you know. Yeah, you know, doesn't matter. Mary Lambie, thank you so much for coming on the Dom Harvey podcast. Really appreciate it. <laughs> I hope you don't regret coming on the podcast or Celebrity Treasure Island. Oh, God, man. Oh, I, oh I'm back to that. Oh. oh, yeah, I must go on. When, when am I on? When do I get kicked off soon? Oh, uh, yeah. Can, can, do you want to end this podcast by looking down the camera and doing a swearing tirade like you did on TV? I would not do that. <laughs> I'm so sorry, my darling. What an embarrassment I am to you. My apologies. And I didn't mean it. I made a little gesture. I thought there was no way I was going to make it. And now my video editor will come to the clip where Mary Lambie swears on celebrity. <laughs> <laughs>